title on the line. 45 combined points in that third quarter. Here we go into the fourth. It's a little bit like a championship boxing match. They keep delivering knockout blows, but they keep getting back up. Second and seven at the 34 for Keaton and the Aggies. He'll keep it. Both feet on the tackle after a short gain. Third down and four coming up from the 37. It's a convertible down and distance for the La Tech defense. But it's not been going their way on this down and distance for them so far. They've got to do it. They've got to, they've got to finish the job here. Six of 11 on third downs. Keaton has rushed for 117. He's thrown for 330. Is it runner pass here? I, I put it Keaton's hands. Keaton underneath, and it is incomplete. Bartlett, the intended receiver, and he'll have to punt it away. There it is. They got one. I think that's the first one of the of the second half that they've converted. I don't remember this many players going back and forth like a punt team and a punt return team going out there. I just don't remember. It's just been lights out football. Yeah, well, the guy we just saw return a kick right there, DJ Banks has a punt return opportunity possibly here as Bennett gets the kick away from the 26. Banks from the 14. And they cover it well. He's out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Big kick, better coverage. 14 minutes, five seconds to go. Cameron and company heating up on offense. Can they rally? Down 17. A 10-game whack winning streak on the line for Louisiana Tech. A number 20 ranking in the BCS rankings as well. Trailing Utah State 41-24. They'll start this drive early in the fourth quarter. Hand off to Dixon, he breaks a tackle, and Kenneth Dixon, the freshman out to the 25-yard line. Five yards, hard-earned yards there. Strong effort by Dixon. Playing as a true freshman. He is, he is quite a football player. He was tearing it up in high school last year. Now he's playing here in a WAC championship type game. And a strong Arkansas, an under-the-radar kid. They're glad to have him here. Cameron throws low, and the catch is made for a first down by Hunter Lee. The Flower Mound, Texas product, moves the chains to 31. A lot of time, but this is a big drive. They get a score here, get the crowd behind them. He would uh, do a lot for that Tech sideline. Well, they're coming off that uh, stop by the defense. And this time they throw to the near side to Quentin Patton and a pick up to the 37, six yards on that play. He's their playmaker, their biggest playmaker. Patton coming in, 83 catches, 11 touchdowns, fifth in the FBS among wide receivers in that category. Four receiver look, Cameron underneath, catch made for a first down. The short passing game effective with Andrew Giat to the 47. Great timing throw. Inside slant. And they hurry up, picking up the tempo here. Hand off to Dixon, running to the left. Spins inside the midfield strike down to the 46 for five more yards. We have not been able to play at the tempo you're accustomed to seeing with Tech this year, but starting to get into a rhythm here. They've had spurts of that tonight. Absolutely, Trey. They're starting to move the football five yards at a time. He'll hand it off to Dixon to the right side. Bounces outside and has a first down. He runs over a man and goes to the 41-yard line. Ryan Sweet, the tackle, he took some punishment on that run. Changing personnel. Look at uh, La Tech running. The, because they ran the football into the sideline, they changed personnel. Utah State can't. Three first downs on the drive as we near the 12-minute mark. Cameron has had a subpar game, still 201 yards through the air. He's got him moving now. Play fake. Downfield, he wants Patton against Davis. It's broken up at the last minute. Will Davis has had his hands full, but he's had some answers against Patton. He really has, Trey. This has been so much fun to watch these two competing against each other. Deep ball once again. Very, very well thrown, but Davis is right there to get his stick his hands up in between 
Patton's hands to knock it away at the last split second. And that's two next level guys. The coaches no tell question. us there's no doubt. Anthony, you'll see them play it on Sunday. Second down now. Cameron. R.P. Stewart the catch. And he's taken down at the 32, just short of the first down. Sweet was over there again. The fifth year senior will hobble off after that catch. I'm not sure what that call was made there by the, the referee. It's a third down and a couple at the 33 yard line. Four of 11 on third downs today. Cameron, quick toss. Patton's got it first down the 25. And out of bounds to the 21 yard line. Again, working against Will Davis. The duel continues. Short throws, deep throws. Quick hitch right here. Trying to make some more yards after the run, but Davis hangs on. He's strong. Six catches, 102 yards now for Quentin Patton. He's played much better in the second half from the 21. Cameron. Oh, what a catch. Circus. That was David Drew that went high to get it. Got his six foot frame up there and hauled it in. Very nice snag. Play action. Pulls out, fires a rocket. Boy, that's that's great timing. Leaping to climb the ladder and catch that football. First and goal from the six, driving to the left side. It's Dixon, and he's within the one and close to the goal line. All of a second down and goal from there. Trey, is it not? It's my mistake. Are they just speeding up now? They're going really, really fast. This is what they want to do. They couldn't do it early. They're doing it now. Straight ahead on the dive. Touchdown. <laughs> Dixon, his second touchdown run. You, you remember what they said during our conference call. We want to wear down the defense. That appears to be what's happening. I don't, I don't see Utah State playing any prevent defense. They're just getting worn down some. They have really played a physical brand of football, rushing it here in the second half. As Nelson makes it a 10-point game, 12 plays, 80 yards in 3 minutes and 11 seconds. 41-31 with the WAC title on the line in Ruston. Has tied a school record, 27 total touchdowns in a season. That was set by Troy Edwards. He has a chance to break it, but more importantly, draws his team within 10 points with 10.54 to go. Plenty of time remaining for Tech, trying to mount a comeback. Chuck Jacobs to the 25 for the Aggies. Out across the 30, nice return from Jacobs to the 32-yard line. They have liked that kickoff return to cross the field, a grass return, we used to call it. Find in the spot. A weakness what they believe in that kickoff coverage of La Tech. Good field position. The Aggies take the, the offensive side. 548 yards of total offense for Utah State. 415 for Louisiana Tech. They have heated up, but they really have not found how to slow down this guy. Chucky Keaton, 330 through the air, 117 on the ground from the sophomore quarterback. Hands it off to Williams. To the outside, puts his head down and runs over a man across the 40-yard line. Is that something? That's a, that's Craig Johnson, the nickelback out there. And he just put his sights and then just lowered the, the boom and took him for a ride. You know, Johnson's not big at 5'8", 180, but he ran over him like he wasn't oh. there. Once again, Carolyn Williams, 5'8", 189. Just tough. Couple of nails. Second and two now, the 41. Williams straight ahead this time and close to the first down. Let's see what mark it. it looks like it is a first down. It is to the 45. Chucky Keaton always a threat. You stick it in Curry Williams, Williams' belly and then take it out on the perimeter. This is what we're going to see in this drive. 
230 yards on the ground for the Aggies. They've done it in a variety of ways between the tackles and outside. Here's Williams inside, bounces it out across midfield. He breaks a couple more tackles on that carry to the 48 for seven yards. A little misdirection, draw play coming back with a blocker, lead blocker. He'll take the rest over there on the sideline. Because they got Joe Hill ready to come in because he's played a good ball game for them as well. Williams with 93 yards. Looking at a second and four now with Hill in at running back. Looking to milk the clock a little bit too. Here. On the ground. And up to Hill. Stretch play to the far side. Tries to cut it back and gets a couple and that's it. Good defensive play by Vontarius Dora, the redshirt freshman from West Point, Mississippi. They're looking now at a third and three. It's going to bring up the third down again. A manageable distance for the defense. Great hustle to come over and make that play on the replay. 6-12 on third downs. Williams. Stays off the field, Hill's the running back, he goes in motion. Keaton throws it incomplete. I don't think Austin was ready for it. He wasn't. It's fourth down. That's about the only play that I've seen him not make today and tonight. He just slung it a little too soon on the slant to Austin. A big stop as Banks awaits the punt from Tyler Bennett. Eight and a half minutes to go. All three timeouts remaining. We could be in for quite a finish. Bennett hangs it up there. And that one's going to find the end zone. Good job by the punt returner, DJ Banks, there to hold off the punt coverage, guys. They did not know where the ball was. They got to look up and find it themselves. Kobe Cameron has found his footing, so to speak. Their offense really struggling in the first half. Just three points has put 28 on the board here in the second half. And you look at his numbers, and all of a sudden they're looking more Cameron Light, 236 yards. Cameron Light. Okay, okay, big bone. Shook off a first half interception. Here he is on play action. Cameron downfield for Patton. And he overshoots him at the 45. Just missing on the double move. Close corner route. One man route. Pretty good job by the corner and the safety getting a double underneath and over top of him. <laughs> 21 of 38 through the year for Cameron. Patton's been his go-to guy of late. Six catches, 102 yards. Play action again to the far side. It's a first down grab. Yards after catch, big there for David Grew. They're making some yardage now, running off the corner and sending the number two receiver to the flat. There's no defender out there. The safety's going to get out there, or the linebacker, Fackrell's going to walk out and play that route. Brian Sweet on the tackle. They go to the other side this time. And it's Grew again. Same play, other side, and that goes for seven yards. Repeat plays. I've heard this all my life. That team repeat plays. I've never seen one do it quite like La Tech. They actually do it, and they're really successful with it. They hurry up now <laughs> from the 40-yard line. Second down and two. Cameron, the other sideline, and that's a first down grab for Miles White. Tackle made by Lawson, but they move the chains to the 44. Under eight minutes to go. Once again, the line stops. It's a first down. They get to settle in, look to the sideline, get to their best play. I've got coaches over there jumping up and down <laughs> the La Tech sideline. They're all excited. This is right in Tech's wheelhouse, this hurry up, up tempo style. They're not phased by having to play fast nearing the seven minute mark. Here's Dixon, almost fumbles it, carries it across midfield and lunges close to the first down at the 46. I saw another sign of the Utah State defense wearing down. I watched that will come across. Watch him put this tackle on to Kenneth Dixon right here. Just use the shoulder. You better put both arms around that guy. 
You can't get that done. That's not good enough to stop him. You're getting tired. Over 100 yards rushing. Now they throw it to Dixon, and he's hammered. And that was Fackrell who hammered him. And now a late flag comes in. You got to call that a late hit? Got to be a late hit. On the second tackle. Fackrell made a terrific play to come up and chop Dixon down. Yep. Oh, uh, my goodness. That is so foolish to come in and spear like that. That's Al Lapuaho, the senior end. That's a possible ejection in my book when you do something like that. you got to get that out of football. Boy, that is a doesn't belong. ill-advised. That 15-yard penalty down to the 30 now. And barely, barely used a minute of time here. Here we are at seven minutes. Tech on the move. Cameron, and they're going to blow this play dead. Flag comes in. They're going to back up the Bulldogs. Utah State almost jumped offside, got back, and then they flinched. La Tech offensive line. Been a problem in the first half, not a problem in the second half until now. This really helps the Aggies because they can get their subs in now, right? Yes. Gives them a breath, gives, gives them, them a chance. A chance to breathe. Once again, what do they like to do? They like to wear the defenses down and win in the fourth quarter. That's the plan. First and 15 now from the 35. They're within two scores. Tech has had to battle back today. Here's Dixon on the carry to the left side. And he gets five yards back to the 30-yard line. Fackrell over there. Tell you what, I, I may have been picking on Fackrell a little while ago, but this guy's just a redshirt freshman. He's playing a lot of football tonight. He's not in high school anymore. He's a good player. I'd say the same about Dixon. Last year was in strong Arkansas playing high school football. <laughs> Absolutely. Second and 11 now. Cameron looking down the middle of the field. He wants Stewart. Can't hang on. And that was McCade Brady that busted it up. R.P. Stewart almost had his fifth touchdown catch of the year. Wow, was that pretty. That's straining, folks, right there. Look at these guys all going to play the ball in the air. Wow, could have been a great catch. Could have been an interception. Third and 11 now as Cameron looks for the call from the sideline. Ninth play of this drive. They're 5 of 12 on third downs. Cameron looking to the sideline. Drew, the catch, goes airborne and has the first down to the 18. They're, High school teammates hooking up again. They're killing Utah State with running off number one receiver and then have a number two receiver come to the flat. That's not getting covered by Utah State. Here's Ray Holly slanting to the right side, and he's down to the 13 for five more yards as we hit the six minute mark. And, and Trey, this, this defense is worn out right now at Utah State. They are, they are. All of their hands are on their hips as a defensive front. Here's Holly again, same play. Gets to the outside this time, inside the 10, and close to the first down. And he'll have it at the six. First and goal from there. And they have a chance to draw within three here. It's amazing the comeback, how they battle really back. You are told that they never give in. And that is certainly a true story. They are down 24 on a couple of occasions. Down 10 now. First to go for the seven. Cameron looking. Throws it away. That was interesting. A rollout to the short side of the field. Crossing backs, trying to hit. It's, it's called a swap boot. They're all covered. Good job by the Aggie defense picking up all of the receivers. No place to go. Throw it away. Smart block. They've been so good in the red zone defense. Tops in the whack, trying to force a field goal here. On second and goal, it's Dixon. Hit at the 10 and driven backwards by Utah State. Brady was there, got some help from Dowdy, the inside linebacker. Big play. Big effort there. It looks like they're going to be. Get the 11 though. That's 
some personnel changes. Four receiver look. Doughty, by the way, 14 tackles after that last one. He leads them in that category. Under five minutes to go. Cameron. Over the middle, intercepted. It's picked off by Utah State's Jake Doughty. And Anderson's team turns him back again in the end zone. Well, you got to take your hats off to Dave Arena and his defense hanging in there. Just hanging off the cliff there, trying to breathe and make a play here, and they do. He thought he had Patton coming across in the post area. The linebacker dropped back deep and picked off the quarterback, playing his eyes. Terrific play by Dowdy. Two interceptions tonight after 429 without a pick all season long for Cameron. Twice, both in the end zone, Davis and then the inside linebacker, Dowdy. Absolutely. Two picks in the end zone, undercutting the receiver. Well, you've got to tip your hat to that Utah State defense. Really they do. have been sensational. They, they have just hung in there by a hair. And here's Williams, and he wants to go. Midfield. And Kerwin Williams tackled by Dave Clark finally as he breaks it open down to the 38-yard line. Just the dive. Split the defense. 45 yards and it gets in field position. And now, there's still 4.36 to go, but they're in a great position here to use clock with the ball on that side of the field. Lots of clock. Now, of course, La Tech has three timeouts. They're gonna have to start using it. They can get a stop here. They should use a timeout and stop. Chucky Keaton playing maybe his best game as an Aggie. There's a catch made by Tialavea. Two-yard pickup. The clock will continue to move as he stayed in bounds with 4.10 to go. It's a short gain. I would start to think about using timeouts. Coaches have different philosophies. You keep for defense or offense. You, you just got to get the clock stopped because they're, they're, they're not going to be able to stop this, this game. It'll be over. We won't have time. Maybe gambling here that they can stop him on this series. Is that the thinking? That has got to be the thinking here. It's going to be under three minutes. Because they're not going to throw the football now. Two huge interceptions of Colby Cameron tonight, but the Utah State offense has played a sensational game. Trying to run their way to a whack title. Here's Williams. Tough sledding again off the right side of the 34 for a couple more. Third and six coming up. Called one right here. Very good. Now this puts you, the onus back on Utah State. They get to decide if they're going to throw it. They're going to run it. Third in six. So a timeout called. 3:28 to go. Third down coming up for Gary Anderson. His team thinking about a championship. Ten point game. Utah State looking at a third and six from the Louisiana Tech 34 yard line. Sonny Dykes D trying to dig in, get the football back for his team. Williams shifts in motion. Keaton looking to throw it, setting up a screen. It's incomplete. <laughs> Wanted Williams. The clock stops, and Tech still has two timeouts remaining. That was a great play to start the football game, but not so good right now. La Tech smelled that out. There was no place to go, plus they had pressure on Keaton. So they're going to punt it, and they want to pin them inside this 10-yard line. And this punter, this left-footed punter, has done a great job for them. He's got 24 kicks inside the 20 this season. 24 of them. Bennett trying to kill it inside the 10. A fair catch called for and made by Banks at the 13-yard line. So with 3.18 to go and a couple timeouts and a 10-point deficit facing Colby Cameron, the WAC title on the line, <laughs> it's come down to this. It's yeah. uh, developed yeah. quite a finish. It has been a great football game. 
I am so appreciative of just being here. Watch it, call it. Well, it's definitely been great. One of the games that's been under the radar nationally when you consider uh, what's at stake a WAC championship, a, a BCS bowl potentially down the road. Should Tech find a way to win this? It's going to be an uphill struggle here in the last three minutes plus. You know, they've moved the ball well this half. I'm counting on them to be able to do it again. Four receivers for Cameron. They rush three. It's tipped at the line and incomplete. That was up front, B.J. Larson. There he is, 6'5", junior end. Oh, an inside rush. Just got in the throwing lane of the quarterback. He's lucky that ball wasn't picked up. A.J. Hata Ali'i, the junior, he may have got a hand up there from that tackle position. Second and ten. Cameron looking deep. Down the middle for Patton. He's got it in stride at the 40 and down to the 35. How about that delivery? What a throw. Uh, you, you gotta believe Utah State's gonna be put, uh, protecting the post area, but not so fast. Kate Brady made a touchdown to save him. 52 yards. Cameron again wants Patton. And it's incomplete this time. Good coverage applied by Will Davis. That has been the battle within the battle today. All day and night long. Seven catches, 154 for Patton. Cameron's over 300 now. 325. Will it be too little too late with 259 to go? We saw him moving down in a minute to score a few minutes and a couple series ago. What can they do here? Two receivers to each side this time. Cameron to the sideline. Catch made by Richie Casey, and he's out of bounds at the 28. Seven-yard pickup, and it stops the clock. Casey, a 50-year senior. Senior day here. There'd be no better way to go out than to come from behind and win this one. Remember, that stops the clock just temporarily. They, they, they've moved the ball back. It's going. It's moving. It's Third and three now. Here's Holly on the carry. Has a first down as he puts his head down to the 23-yard line. That was a collision. Lars McMillan and Holly. He is a tough guy. And that clock rolling again. Two timeouts left for Louisiana Tech. Patton split bottom of the screen. Cameron. Looking his way, makes the grab, gets a foot down, out of bounds at the 18 with 2.24 left. As soon as that ball gets marked, clock will start. And there's an Aggie down behind the Louisiana Tech that, backfield to 31. Stop the clock. That's a big break for La Tech right now. They get to breathe a little bit. And that looks like. Patai Ali'i, the guy that deflected that pass early in the drive. The 307 pounder out of West Valley City, Utah. Snow Junior College. Boy, I used to look out there at some of those players. Couldn't quite convince some of them to come to North Carolina from all the way out there. Was Bo, Bo Jay actually was the injured Aggie. So Bo Jay Fili Moyatu, who is a first team all conference candidate and they can ill afford to not have him out there. He's a playmaker. He'll come off. He plays their boundary side linebacker in that 3-4 defense. And they'll probably just sub a defensive back in there. Moving the defense around. Second and five from the 18. Bringing pressure. Here they come. Cameron, room to run. He's to the 10, and he runs out of bounds at the eight yard line. First and goal from the eight, with two minutes and six seconds on the clock. I think score quickly here. That'd be, that'd be great for La Tech. They, once again, the, the clock's not gonna stop unless they get it out of bounds on the next one. They, they're going under two minutes, now it will stop when they get out of bounds. From the seven, hand off to Holly, cuts it back. It's Hunter Lee, he's in, touchdown. Bulldogs. How about that? Hunter Lee on the carry. His third rushing touchdown. And they're within four. And the big question now, if they can get this extra point through the uprights, 
Will they onside kick or will they kick off and try to use their timeouts to stop Utah State? It's going to come down to that. Do they believe that La Tech defense can hold them? Hunter Lee had the go-ahead touchdown run last year in the fourth quarter at Utah State in their 24-17 win. His touchdown here draws him within one score. And now, a timeout call with this extra point coming up. Timeout taken by Utah State. Important extra point coming here for Matt Nelson. Hunter Lee on the carry. Former running back converted to wide receiver. He's one of those guys also under the radar, Flower Mound, Texas, like Dixon out of Strong, Arkansas, and uh, is developed into quite a star at this level. And they're gonna review this, I, I, we understand. The points are on the board. They're going to review, was the right knee down? And it appears it was right there. It was down, see the but look. where was the ball at the time? Remember, it's got to be indefeatable evidence. They want, they, they, they want, number one, they assume the call is correct, and then they have to get beyond doubt to overturn with indisputable video evidence. So right now it's called a touchdown. It's going to be hard to overturn it. You know what, Trey? I think he's about a foot short. Okay, now you look for the ball, though. Don't you look for the ball yeah, first where, where before the, ball the knee? Is. Okay, that's right. And it, on the from the end zone that we're looking at right here, right now, it does. It looks like it's a touchdown. If you go back to the sideline, I think where his knee hits, it looks like he's a foot short, which Utah State would love to see happen because he'll put more, give him more time. Now there's that imaginary plane that you can break the plane with the ball in the air. Did he? Reached the ball across before the Doesn't knee came down. Doesn't have to cross, just has to touch the plane. Did it touch that plane? That's the question. I think the ball is just... <laughs> it's just too tough to overturn that call. And they call it a touchdown. Yep. That, that's it. Not enough video evidence to that's overturn right. it, exactly. and the touchdown stands for Hunter Lee. And that's big, because, you know, you run another play, potentially you don't get in, and more time off the clock for Sonny Dykes in this uphill battle. And now a big extra point for Matt Nelson. 67 of 70 in his career. Missed one against UTSA a couple weeks ago. No problem with that one. And they're within three with 154 remaining. Eight plays, 86 yards in just a minute 24. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's just this. These two teams have battled. We knew La Tech had it in them. They have played a magnificent second half, and their defense has risen to the occasion on at least a couple of the drives and possessions by Utah State. How about these numbers, John? 613 total yards for Utah State, 560 for Louisiana Tech, and the 560 is under their average of 577. That's true. They've played a subpar game on offense. <laughs> They're down by three. Well, you'll see Utah State set up here with a lot of players in the onside kick area. One player back to retrieve a deep kick. I'd be surprised if they deep kick it. Each team with two timeouts. Nelson with the good hands team out there for Utah State. And he is going to kick it away. Williams is a deep man. And he will take a knee. They'll have the touchback with 154 to go. No time off the clock. Great kick. And now what it forces, it forces Utah State to make a first down. Tech has 378 yards of offense in the second half alone. But it will it be too little too late? It really comes down to their defense. Can they stop Keaton and the Aggies? It's, they, they, they haven't played good defense all year long. They, they've played fairly well in the second half. They've got to stop a first down. They've got to use two timeouts quickly here to, to, to get the clock to stop. I don't think Utah State's going to run the ball out of bounds, and I don't think they're going to throw it on first or second down. The Aggies, last three possessions, three punts. They'll start from the 25. 
The WAC title hanging to the balance. First down by Utah State, game over. Williams cuts it back, and he's across the 30-yard line. Good first down play of close to six yards for Kerwin Williams. And a timeout. One remaining now for Tech. Well, if, you know, if you're the Aggies, you put it on the shoulders of Williams and Keaton here, don't you? Absolutely. Some way, shape, or yeah. form? Yep. You got Keaton's got to fake the dive or the zone and pull it and run. Stay in bounds, try to pick up a first down. Gary Anderson has done an amazing job in four years at Utah State. Four win seasons each of his first two years. Seven wins last year, the most at the program since 1993. This year, they're within a whisker of grabbing at least a share of the WAC title. They'll host Idaho next week. And that game is uh, for the outright WAC title should they win this one here. And they're surely going to a, a bowl game, back-to-back -back bowl games, the first time since 1960. Wow. They've only been to six bowl games in program history, two back-to-back -back since 1960-61. Second and five, Bulldogs with one timeout remaining. Bowl game doesn't mean much to them right now. They want a first down. A national ranking on the line for Louisiana Tech in a 10-game whack winning streak. Williams shifts behind Keaton. Here's the option. Keaton pitches to Williams. They read it pretty well. They run him out of bounds. And Short the of the first stops. down. And the clock stops. That's what they didn't want to do. He needs to go down. Williams needs to go down before he gets out of bounds. Now he gets three yards, so they've got a third and two coming up at the 33. <laughs> Makes it even more exciting. And we've had enough excitement. Haven't we? It's been awesome. Third and two. They're six of 14 on third downs, and they're going to empty the backfield. How about this? They split Williams out, bottom of the screen. Trey, this could be that quarterback draw, so they got to take away the quarterback. Williams now motions behind Keaton. Here's the option. Keaton keeps it. Hit and dropped short of the first down at the 33. They're going to get it back as that was John L. White, the senior from Ruston. And just think, if Williams had fallen to the ground before he went out of bounds, they had burned that timeout last time. Now it's burned. Now they got a buck 38 to get the ball back. On the punt return, DJ Banks will be, be, will be back. He's a dangerous return guy. They use their final timeout, 1.38 to go, and Gary Anderson, it, he'll count on his defense, and it should come down to this. One of the best defenses in college football against one of the best offenses. There's no question about it. And we've seen great defense play. This will be a little bit different for Utah State. They will be trying to play a little bit of prevent. No timeouts for La Tech. Bennett gets it away from his 23. Banks a booming kick. He hauls it in at the 15. Makes one man miss. Banks trying to get to the outside. Banks to the 20. And he's finally run out of bounds. Pretty good coverage. He had to run a long way to get eight yards. And a good return on a sky kick. Had to be 45, 50 yards in the air. Great hang time. In the second half, Louisiana Tech with Cameron at the helm. Their last six drives, five of them have been touchdowns. And they've been quick, though, too. I mean, they have not taken much time off the clock. Field, now, field goal ties it as well. Field goal, absolutely. Don't forget that. Field goal ties it. That's all they need. And the ball will stop when they go out of bounds. 77 yards in front of them. There's a screen caught by Patton. And he's cut down at the 27-yard line. That was a tackle made by Jake Dowdy. At the tunnel screen, that's run back into the middle of the field. Not a little surprised at that call. No timeouts remaining. Nearing the one-minute mark. Cameron rolling, throwing low to Patton. Did he get it? He did. It's a first down grab to the 34. They'll stop the clock momentarily to move the chains. We'll see if they, I don't think he got out of bounds, so it will begin, right? There it goes, they'll now. run it now. Yep, under a minute. Whack title on the line, Cameron rolling right. 
running it out of bounds to the 36. Good job. Very good job back then. Smart player. So much at stake here. Maybe, maybe a BCS bull bid. Orange Bowl officials are on hand watching this with Louisiana Tech. They need to get in the top 16 to be invited, but they still have a lot of real estate in front of them. The WAC title, just one of the things hanging in the balance for Dykes and company. Trey, they've got to get at least another 35, 40 yards. Blitz coming. Cameron, Patton, out of bounds. Catch made, the first down for 47. Ten catches, 170 for Quentin Patton now. They're working the sidelines pretty well. Yeah, they, yes, they are. Utah State's got to do something to take away the outcut, but they don't want to give up the big game, big game in the post. Empty backfield, five receivers. Here comes the blitz. Cameron, wide open is White. He has a first down, and he's out of bounds at the Aggies 42. Pick up a 12. A lot of time on that clock. They're just moving it down. They've got to have some rotation to take away these outs. Matt Nelson has struggled with his confidence of late, the field goal kicker for Louisiana Tech. They're hoping it doesn't come down to that. They're thinking touchdown here. 15 yards away from kicking a field goal, Trey. Again, that five receiver look. Aggies showing blitz. They're coming with a couple linebackers. Cameron's going to run it. Runs to the sideline. He's tripped up and he goes down. That's a big play. The clock will run with 36 seconds. Got to scramble. Got to get lined up. Maybe even spike it. Clock running. It's second down. They're trying to get set. It's at 22 seconds now, and he spikes it. Costly stumble. He tripped up. Couldn't get to the sideline. I, I, I'm not sure if he got hit. I think he stumbled on the grass. I'm not sure, but he was running, trying to get out of bounds. Great coverage. They changed up the coverage to play man-to-man. -man. Let's see. He stumbled on the turf. Holy smokes. Well, the Aggies are trying to get people on the field here. Oh, they, snap they, they caught a break a little bit because they looked to the sideline in the freeze. Only 21 seconds to work with. Cameron rolling, throwing, catch. No, it's dropped. It appeared that Hunter Lee had it, and he dropped it at the 20. It looks like it just goes through his hands. He timed it well. Looked to me a little bit like he tried to body catch it instead of catching it in his hands, which sometimes is a real problem for receivers. And now it's fourth down. They're out of Nelson's range. They're going to go for it here, fourth and four. Nelson's career long is 47. This would be about a 53 yarder. They're saying, no, we're going for it here. Gotta, this gotta is convert. it. Got to convert first down here. They're bringing here comes everybody. The blitz. They're bringing the house. Cameron, catch made by Holly. He's got a first down, 20. And he's out of bounds with 10 seconds to go. Now they're in field goal range. Yes, they are. And they could take one more crack at the end zone. They could take one. And they probably should. This quarterback's smart enough. He's had a couple interceptions in the end zone, but he's smart enough. Wow, he got it away. Big play by Holly. Boys, he clutch. 21-yard pickup. Ball at the 15 now with 10 seconds, no timeouts. It's got to be a play to the end zone or out of bounds, or this thing's over. That's it. Touchdown or field goal. You cannot be tackled in bounds. Keep an eye on Patton, number four, bottom of the screen. Cameron looking that way. Cameron rolling, throwing. He just threw it away. Smart. They were trying to get Holly one on one, and he made the move to beat Fackrell inside into the post area. He just couldn't quite get the ball to him. Matt Nelson will be called on here for a field goal attempt to send this one into overtime. Throughout his career, he has been amazing. Chris Boniel, Matt Stover, Josh Scobie, Nelson, they have all been good, but he struggled with his confidence, missing five of his last six field goals coming in. Did not attempt a field goal last week. This one from 32 yards for the tie. Nelson, got it. We get overtime, baby. <laughs> what a football game. Holy smokes, I tell you what. And I didn't even pay attention to be here. I'm thrilled. What a ball game. He got to feel good for the senior.
He's battled back some demons. Snap hooked a couple of them a couple weeks ago against UTSA. Delivers in the clutch. And we're going to overtime with the WAC title on the line. right away. You talking about a team hanging in there and, and, and saying to themselves, we're going to keep playing. Play after play after play. Give La Tech a lot of credit coming back. 11 plays, 62 yards. They didn't have any timeouts to work with, and they got it done. Yeah, you think about Kerwin Williams going down to take that timeout away. That would have been the game. They've been one of the most exciting teams in college football throughout the course of this year. Lost by two points to Texas A&M in Shreveport, 59-57. They lead the nation in total offense. Second to Oregon in points scored at over 53 per game. And they erased a 24-point deficit here in the second half. Yes, they have. And, and once again, a, a great team effort. Probably their best team effort Defense, special teams, kickoff return for a touchdown, and offense together in the second half. Probably their best half of the year. Well, as good as Nelson should feel about that one, inevitably, it seems to always come down to kickers in the overtime period. You got you can only remember, you have to have a selective memory, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, and of course, U Utah State has struggled a little bit with the La Tech defense recently. So. Here we go. And the keys for both of these teams were what they did in the red zone, and that's really what we're going to see here in overtime. How you do in the red zone, starting from the 25-yard line. Utah State was snuffing them out. They were one for three, La Tech was against Utah State in the first half in the red zone. Better here in the second. Gary Anderson. His team is up 41-24. He's going to head into overtime tied at 41. Kerwin Williams and Colby Cameron out there for the coin toss. So Tech has the option. And you almost see it 100% of the time. You go on defense first, so you know what you need to score when you get the football. And these fans have seen it's been a roller coaster ride here. Give huh? that quarterback some even more credit. I know he's gotten a lot of credit this year, going on an unbelievable streak of 419, 429 passes in a row without an interception. Through two tonight, but he kept playing too. That's a credit to his character and his makeup and his unselfishness as a football player for a lot tech. Total offense, 622 for Louisiana Tech, 621 for Utah State. So we got to get here. I think you said that about four hours ago. Well, Cameron now has 391 yards. He's thrown the ball 58 times. The only thing that comes closely, well, he, at Texas A&M against the Aggies, he was 44 of 58 for 450. He's had games like that, and this is on the biggest stage possible with. Orange Bowl officials in attendance and a WAC championship hanging to the balance. Liberty Bowl officials, Independence Bowl officials, they're here. Aggies get the first possession of overtime. Winner grabs a share of the WAC title. Williams puts his head down, first down carry. All the way to the 12-yard line, 13 yards for Williams. You think they have some confidence in the run game? guy is he is a north-south runner yet he can get to the perimeter and take it upfield out there too Williams with 158 on the ground Keaton is rushed for 121 how about this they go with a bunch set four receivers top of the screen with the diamond look out there four receivers to the top Keaton throws it over there they set up blockers for Williams He's to the five, and he has seven, eight yards inside the five. It'll be a second down. They can get a first down at the two-yard line. 
absolute known screen situation. Great blocks out there in front of Williams. A wall of blockers. Sonny Dykes D trying to dig in here, force a field goal. Second and two from the four. Hand off Williams straight ahead, puts his head down, has a first down, has a touchdown. The Aggies score on their first possession. There was some power running there, wasn't it? Let's give it to 25. A little power oh. Just slammed it in there. And now the all-important extra point for Nick Diaz. A sophomore from Redondo Beach. And it's good. 48-41. Now the Bulldogs will have to answer. It's got to be comforting if you're Gary Anderson, knowing how good your D has been all year in the red zone. And you've got to be able to run the football, don't you? When you get it to that extra period with well, some success. Very important to run the football in this situation. And La Tech is very good at doing it. But I, I, they're going to have to put it on this quarterback. Now, the question is, <laughs> I, I, I've got to believe that Utah State's a, a little tired, a little drained. They, they got to they really suck it up right here and play great defense. From the 25, here's Dixon on the carry. Hit and wrapped up after a two-yard gain. Fili Moyatu is in there. Got some help from Jake Dowdy, the inside linebacker. Second and eight. Dixon comes out. Holly's in there now. Two receivers to each side. Again, keeping an eye on Patton, bottom of the screen. The All-America candidate, Cameron Low throw. Completion. That's Hunter Lee, isn't it? It is. It's short of the first down, and they've got a third and three coming up. Yeah, they, they get this. They're in four-down territory right now. Come on, they're uh, obviously, and that's why you like to give the other team the opportunity to have the ball first. So they know they've got two downs to make three yards. You need to get the football to the 15-yard line. Split backs this time. Dixon and Holly. Cameron wants to throw it. He's being pressured, and he throws it away. Here it is. Fourth and three. They need three yards to keep their whack title hopes alive Absolutely. unless something crazy happens next week in that Utah State-Idaho game. We won in 12. <laughs> this team has fought hard to be in the top 20. Right now, Utah State's struggling to get lined up. First possession overtime. The Aggies with a touchdown. Bulldogs trying to answer here. They changed plays, they've changed defenses. Holly in the backfield, Patton split bottom of the screen, handoff Holly straight ahead, it's not going to get, get it, it done, and the Aggies are going to be WAC champions. They win it in overtime. They changed plays, Utah State changed defenses, and they got into the one to stop the inside zone run. Cat and mouse. Pretty much all game. Great second half by La Tech, but a big upset here in overtime. We thought it would come down to best offense, one of the best in the country against Gary Anderson's defense, ranked sixth in the nation and in, in in top ten in a lot of categories. That's what it did. Their D stood up despite the onslaught in the second half. They got it done when it mattered. They had to go into the fifth period to get it done, is what it, what it did. And that's sometimes what you know, you take a, a lesson from your coach. Uh, Gary Anderson was, was very confident during the week when we talked with him, and his defense performed, especially when it counted. A bitter loss for Louisiana Tech, the highest ranking ever, and they suffer their second loss this season, but a tremendous game as Utah State grabs a share of the WAC title. These programs, credit to Coach Dykes and Anderson, they've done a tremendous job. Absolutely, they've both done great jobs taking over their programs. They're both going to bowl games. It's just a matter of when and who 
and, and they go both got games to play, so they both got to close it out next week. Utah State will host Idaho with a chance to win the outright WAC title as Gary Anderson celebrates, and Louisiana Tech will go to San Jose State to close out their regular season. John, enjoy it. Trey, it was a pleasure. What a great ball game to call. And I look forward to the next time. I tell you what, we couldn't have asked for anything better. For John Bunning, I'm Trey Bender saying so long from Ruston, Louisiana. Final score 48 41 in overtime. The Aggies win a share of the WAC title. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.